Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. This week, we're going to take a look at a special selection technique called the Quick Mask Mode. We're going to use this along with some of our other selection tools to create a really complex selection. Now, selections are necessary because it's how you tell Photoshop which pixels you want to work with. We wish it would be as easy as simply saying with this image here, select the bear, but it's not. What we need to do is create a selection based on values like color and luminance and saturation so we could properly make a selection. Let's see how. So what we're going to do here is try to make an initial selection. I'm going to start using the quick selection tool that comes with Photoshop CS3 and get a nice big brush. So we'll go ahead and press the right bracket key to make that larger. And as I drag through the bear, it attempts to make a selection. Now, it got a little too much there, so if we hold down the Option key, it'll subtract. And that works okay, but this is definitely a complex image. We have a tan and brown bear on a gray and brown backdrop. So let's get a quick selection here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because that's what we'll do to refine it. There we go. Hold down the Shift key to add and drag through here. And let's just get his foot. There we go. Not perfect, but good to start. Now, to finesse this, we're going to press Q or come over here and click for the Quick Mask Mode. Now, if you don't like the color of the Quick Mask Mode, you could double click and change it. So if we wanted to go to something like a green here, so it was easier to see, and then we could change the opacity to say 70%. And when we enter Quick Mask Mode, there you have it. Now, the key here is you want to go ahead and touch up this mask with your paintbrush. So let's zoom in here so we could see it a bit better and take a look at some of these edges. Now, the tools you're going to use to complete this are going to be your regular paintbrush tool. As you paint with black, it's going to add to the selection. And as you paint with white, it's going to subtract. So you want to paint with a gentle, soft edge brush. There we go and go over any of the areas that were missed. Now the navigator comes in handy here. We see that we need to get in here. So let's use a smaller brush and paint with black. And we really have to take our time and work this in. But that's what complex selections are for. They will take time to get. If you need to, you could even paint with a lower opacity, like 20% here, to build up a general gentle selection. There we go. And then let's go back to 100% and get in this trouble area here. So it's just a matter of painting. And we can get there, but it will take a few strokes to build up. Now, we're not going to get through a perfect selection today because this could take a good 15 minutes, depending upon our skill level and just how much of a perfectionist we want to be. But we'll get it pretty close. To speed things up, remember, you could hold down the Shift key to sort of draw straight lines and connect these. And we'll go ahead and fill this big area in here with a larger brush more quickly. Now, where it gets tricky is this gentle feathered edge here with the bare hair. So let's go to a 20% brush and paint over that with a few strokes so it builds up. This will be a difficult area to get, but we'll build it with a gentle selection. There we go. Pan around and look. We need to do the same thing here. Some gentle fur tufts. And as we move around the image here, we could see that we just need to occasionally touch up. The quick selection tool did a pretty good job. I'm just holding down the space bar, which allows me to pan around and look at the image. And if you need to, you can always go ahead and refine this. Let's go ahead and paint out a little bit more of this rock here. There we go. And if you need to, you can use tools like smudge and blur to soften your edges. There we go. Paint that out. Good. Let's grab that blur tool. And you'll notice as we blur this edge, left bracket for smaller, it doesn't actually blur the image. It just softens the selection. 
So if you have a buffer zone around hair and things like that, that's where this can really come in handy. Additionally, if you're feeling lazy, I like to use the smudge tool and I'll just set that to darken mode and I could gently push the mask in here like it was wet paint. And it pushes the dark pixels of the mask in. There we go. And we'll just gently push that in until we get to the edge of the fur. And you see that's working very well. There we go. Now this is a very challenging photo. So see how we're going quickly, but it's still doing a decent job. There we go. Let's switch back to the blur tool. Soften this edge up a little bit. And we're coming back around the horn here, so we're in pretty good shape. B for brush, paint that out. And you see just how hard it is to get a good selection when you have a brown subject on a somewhat brown background. But the blur tool does a nice job in these transition zones and where needed, we'll switch to smudge and just push that in a little bit so it eats into the fur. There we go. We're back up to the top. Blur that out. And here we go, around the ears, grab our paintbrush and get this little bit. Got too much, flip over to white and paint, and there you have it. So it looks like we've successfully gotten the bear, and what we'll do now is exit the quick mask mode to create a selection. Looks like we didn't quite get his nose there, so let's go ahead and paint. There we go. That's working well. And we fill that in. Remember, if you paint too far, you just switch over to the other color. So if we were to go too far here and get into an area we didn't want, we'll just flip back over and paint that back out. Let's zoom out. Looks like we got that pretty good. Get a little bit of his head in here. And I think we actually have our bear. Good. Check out the nose. That looks to be our last little rough spot. Good. Once you're satisfied with your selection, you'll just simply press the Q key to exit the quick mask mode. And this will turn this into an active selection. Now you're all seeing how the perfectionist in me is getting the best. There we go. Good. Let's see how that turned out. Q exits the quick mask mode and turns that into an active selection. Let's go ahead and double click and name that layer bear. And at this point, we could add a layer mask or take advantage of the fact that we have the ability here, select the marquee tool to click refine edge. This allows us to smooth this out just a little bit and feather it if we need to. And then you can contract and expand the mask as needed. That looks pretty good. Let's soften the radius just a bit and click the add layer mask button. And there you go. We've extracted the bear from the background. So the quick mask mode really comes in handy because it allows you to use your paintbrush tools. It's a great way to create a very active selection because you could blur it, smudge it, paint it, nudge it, and do all those things you need to deal with things like wispy hair and low contrast edges. It does take time, but it's certainly doable and works much better than clunky tools like the background eraser. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. I'm your host, Rich Harrington, and be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com.